This video was made possible by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Watch all of these videos early and ad-free, along with tons of other exclusive content, by following the link down below. The jaguar is one of the most impressive predators in the Americas. In every ecosystem they're in, they're apex predators, the top dogs. Or, well, top cats of the food chain without any natural predators. They're one of the best ambush hunters in the animal kingdom, second only to, perhaps, drop bears. Jaguars have bites strong enough to crack through the shells of turtles and tortoises, and this lets them commit a unique killing blow, biting right through their prey's skull and stabbing through their brain, which generally leads to death and then getting eaten by a jaguar. But this fearsome, ferocious apex predator can be bested by this thing that doesn't even have teeth. Giant anteaters, also called ant bears, even though they are neither ants nor bears, are indisputably one of the creatures that exist in this world. I don't know where their neck ends and their head begins, and frankly, I don't want to. But what I do know is that they swallow almost constantly while eating. Ant eaters eat, believe it or not, ants and other bugs, especially termites and bee larvae. They send a long, noodly tongue to extract bugs from out of their homes. Think of a UFO beam pulling someone out of their bed, except the UFO beam is a tongue and the UFO is swallowing constantly. Ant eaters' tongues are around 2 feet or 60 centimeters long, and they're covered not only by a lot of remarkably sticky saliva, but also bristly taste buds that curve backwards in order to velcro on as many unfortunate bugs as possible. Their tongue can flicker in and out around 160 times a minute, or 3 times a second, letting them lasso hundreds of bugs a minute. But without teeth, how exactly do anteaters chew up all these insects? Do they just not chew their food and let their strong stomach acid break down the food instead? No, and in fact, anteaters don't have stomach acid either. So if you were trying to make a stomach acid and tooth soup, you could not make it out of an anteater. What they do have, however, are stomachs reminiscent of the gizzards of birds that, FYI, by and large, also don't have teeth. Gizzards in birds are a second stomach that serve to mechanically digest food. Birds will often pass half-digested food to and from their gizzard and their true stomach that chemically digests food a few times before it passes through the rest of their digestive tract and out their butt. Anteaters have one stomach that's essentially just a gizzard. Strong contractions pummel insects against the hard flaps and folds of the stomach lining, turning the stomach into an organic mortar and pestle. Also, anteaters will often ingest a bit of grit and dirt to act like sandpaper in the stomach to erode the ants, just like how birds will often eat some rocks to help out in their gizzard. Even though they don't make their own stomach enzymes, anteaters aren't entirely bereft of chemical digestion. They use the formic acid from their prey to help digest too, which is kind of messed up. It would be like if a cannibal used someone's severed arm to tenderize the rest of their flesh before eating them. One of the most distinctive things about the anteater, however, is their striking fur pattern, which is somewhat reminiscent of the razzle-dazzle camouflage used by boats during the First World War. Scientists think the pattern is supposed to be a sort of camo, but there's some debate as to how exactly anteaters are camoed by this pattern. One possibility is that it's a disruptive coloration, which is when a pattern, like the classic green and brown camo of military uniforms, breaks up the outline of an animal or a tank. Irregular patterns or splotches of contrasting color catch the eye and distract it from recognizing the shape that the pattern is on, making it difficult for a predator to tell where an animal ends and the surroundings begin. However, a recent study suggested that anteaters' patterns might actually be a form of warning camouflage, also called aposematism. The quintessential example of warning camo is, of course, the poison dart frog. They use their bright colors to warn to predators that they're poisonous. Monarch butterflies use their eye-catching wings to signal the exact same message. The coat of the fearsome honey badger also serves as a sort of warning camo, too. Honey badgers have what's called reverse countershading. Regular countershading is a very common form of camouflage whereby the bottom of an animal will be a lighter color than their back. 
deer, sharks, squirrels, and even military equipment like airplanes and tank barrels. It's super common and also quite effective. Brains rely a lot on shading cues to determine the shape of an object and thereby other things like its distance and size. Countershading, however, tries to contour away the natural shadows a creature's body casts on its underside to help disguise them. Honey Badger's reverse countershading, therefore, makes them extra visible. Everyone on the savanna knows how dangerous honey badgers are, so they keep their distance when they see one coming. It's thought that anteaters' pattern might act more like this, making them extra visible so those around them know that they shouldn't be messed with. In particular, anteaters have contrasting patches of fur around their ankles, and this might be to direct onlookers' attention to an anteater's big honkin' claws. The giant anteater's scientific name, Myrmecophaga tridactyla, which means anteater and three fingers, respectively. Giant anteaters, however, have more than three fingers, so that's kind of embarrassing for the scientists who named them. Anteaters have five fingers or toes on each of their feet, and four of their front toes have claws curved like talons that are four inches or ten centimeters long and end in vicious points. They actually walk around on their knuckles kind of like gorillas do, so they can keep their claws out of the way. Anteaters also have extra large shoulder bones to give its terrace major even more leverage and pulling power so that the claws can be used to ravage termite mounds and anthills. And, well, just about anyone or anything else. Anteaters show off their claws not only by directing attention to them with their patches of fur, but also by rearing up on their hind legs, posing like the Cristo Redentor in Brazil, or a crucifix, which presumably gives them quite the leg up against fighting any vampires they might encounter in the Amazon. You can see this collared anteater, a cousin of giant anteaters, rearing up in this article. But, as per usual, this Daily Mail article is misleading, because anteaters don't throw their arms up in surrender, but instead as a threat, showing off their talons. If you don't heed this warning, it could mean disaster. Or death. Over the past 15 years, there have been three recorded incidents of anteaters killing humans. In 2010, a hunter was killed by an anteater, and in 2007, a captive anteater killed a zookeeper. The anteater was named Ramon, and he was well known for being aggressive. In 2012, a man hunting attacked a cornered anteater with a knife because he didn't want to catch his hunting dogs in the crossfire of his gun. The autopsy afterwards showed the man had 10 one and a half inch puncture wounds around his body from the anteater's claws, and it took five bullets shot by the hunter's son to take the anteater down. So, it should come as no surprise then that a giant anteater could also take down a jaguar. After all, jaguars are around the same size as people, ranging in length between 3 foot 8 and 6 foot 1, or 1.1 meters and 1.8 meters, and weighing anywhere between 123 and 212 pounds, or 56 and 96 kilograms. A kinda tall guy is bigger than most jaguars are, and we know that anteaters can take out a dude, even one wielding a knife. Plus, the largest giant anteaters weigh in over 110 pounds, or 50 kilograms, and are between 6 and 7 feet long, which is longer and heavier than a small female jaguar is. And that's not even to mention how anteaters have extra fluffy tails to make them look even larger and also, adorably, serve as a blanket to sleep under on chilly nights. Hidden cameras have recorded video of anteaters successfully thwarting off hungry jaguars by rearing up on their hind legs and lunging out with their claws. It's thought that encounters like this where anteaters get the upper hand, or paw or claw or, you know, whatever, happen when jaguars and anteaters encounter each other at random, like when they both go to the same watering hole, or when jaguars fumble their ambush. Jaguars are ambush predators that rely on surprise to take out prey their size or larger. Because when they don't sneak up on their prey, this can happen, which can, if angry Ramon the anteater has taught us anything, result in death. Chance encounters between anteaters and jaguars are somewhat likely, considering the overlapping range of the two creatures and the fact that jaguars hunt anteaters quite a lot and, so presumably, fail at hunting them a lot too. In the Pantanal region, anteaters make up only about 3% of the big cats' diets, because here they prefer to eat ranchers' livestock instead. 
But out on the grasslands, anteaters can make up almost 75% of a jaguar's diet, enough that you could consider them anteater specialists or anteater eaters. Anteaters killing jaguars is, of course, quite rare in the grand scheme of things. And honestly, I made this video mostly as an excuse to talk about anteaters because they're one of my absolute favorite animals. But I hope I've given you all a newfound appreciation for these dorky little critters. But if you're leaving this video wishing you learned a bit more about jaguars, I would recommend checking out The Secret Lives of Jaguars on Curiosity Stream next, which is part of a huge series about big cats in general. If you left this video wishing you knew less about jaguars than before you started, I, unfortunately, do not have a reverse streaming service to recommend to you that you can suction memories out of your brain from. A curiosity vacuum, if you will. But I could recommend that you watch so many of the thousands of titles available in Curiosity Stream that you learn so much that all the new knowledge drowns out the stuff about jaguars. When you sign up for Curiosity Stream for the low, low price of $15 a year using the link curiositystream.com slash bioarc you can click down below, you will also get access to Nebula, my very own streaming service that I personally made with my blood, sweat, tears, and snot, along with some of my creator friends, like Lindsay Ellis, Real Engineering, Sam from Wendover, and the Windmill from Real Life Lore. Why did we make Nebula? It's simple. We wanted to talk about things the evil algorithm on YouTube would not promote. This is what happens on YouTube when you talk about controversial topics like modern wars and conflicts or even LGBT topics. And this is what happens when you talk about those very same topics on Nebula. This is because, on YouTube, Pepsi and Clorox get pretty mad for some reason when their ads are put up in front of videos of schools or churches getting blown up. But on Nebula, there aren't any ads at all, so this isn't ever an issue. If you watch videos on Nebula, there won't ever be annoying sponsor reads either, like this one. And plus, all of these BioArc videos come out there early, so you can watch all of them at least a few days early before they ever come out here on YouTube. So go ahead and click the link down below to check out both streaming services. And now, since you made it all the way through that ad read and hopefully you didn't just skip through it, here's a reward, a fun fact. About 10% of jaguars are melanistic, meaning all black, and in dense, shadowy jungles, about 25% are all black, probably because it helps with camouflage, or maybe just because it looks cool. This mutation is caused by a dominant allele in jaguars, but a similar mutation happens in their leopard cousins because of a recessive allele. Interestingly, black panthers aren't one contiguous shade of black. If you look closely, you can see that their rosettes, or spots, are actually a darker shade of black, like when you paint with Vanta Black on a regular black canvas. Thanks for watching BioArc, and see you next time.